when I was in fifth standard, I said to myself that when I grow up, I want to be a freedom fighter. But my fight will be the fight with, with reasoning, fight with education. Because our, because our struggle is based on truth. That Tibet was an independent country and China, out of bully, invaded our country and is maintaining the brutal occupation of our country. So this is uh, where I stay. Uh, I have stacks of this book, Kora, here, like this, and here also. So this is basically my business, you know, the business of selling books. I get it uh, reprinted once in a while when it's uh, sold out. Uh, and it's uh, printed very cheaply uh, here in Dharamshala, just nine rupees a copy. Uh, it's um, recycled handmade paper on the outside and um, the cheapest uh, print paper inside is the newsprint. It would cost about 9 rupees a copy and uh, I sell it for 50 rupees. Um, I make sure that there is always uh, print uh, for sale and this is my main uh, source of income. I live out of writing. Uh, but luckily um, I've been able to make my living just out of writing and I never needed anything more uh, than what I, what little uh, I earn from my writing. Um, um, I'll read this poem called uh, Refugee. Um, this is kind of a reflection about the whole idea of being born in exile and born a refugee because my parents came from Tibet and, and we were born in India so we are the second generation Tibetans uh, born in India growing up here with the idea that one day we will return to our own country <clears throat> uh, so this poem says when I was born my mother said you are a refugee our tent on the roadside smoked in the snow. On your forehead, between your eyebrows, there is an R embossed, my teacher said. I scratched and scrubbed on my forehead, I found a brash of red pain. I am born refugee. I have three tongues. The one that sings is my mother tongue. The R on my forehead between my English and Hindi, the Tibetan tongue reads Rangzan. Freedom means Rangzan. So, initially when, when uh, the first generation Tibetans, when they first came to India, uh, because they were so very unfamiliar with the with the modern world of uh, transportation, communication, machines, industry. Um, however underdeveloped India was at the time, uh, the Tibetans couldn't take part in any, any of the industrialized India. So most of them were uh, working. Uh, they were given the work of road construction labor in the Himalayas. So my parents <clears throat> of the whole generation, they started to do uh, road construction work in the Himalayas uh, and also in Sikkim, Sikkim and uh, uh, upper regions of uh, Himachal Pradesh. Mm, they used to set up tents on the roadside and after every 10-15 days when the road construction work uh, progressed, they shifted the house. Uh, the tent to a new place. And in the early 1970s, uh, my parents say that I was born in such a tent on the roadside. So I come from there, uh, basically a, a child of a coolie family. 
Um, so this road uh, from Mandi, Kulu, Manali, over the Rotang Pass, through Lahul Spiti, right up to Leh, one of the most important roads in India today for both tourism and roads for India's uh, military, was actually built by the Tibetan refugees in those years. Uh, for me, the whole idea of being a refugee is, is so very funny. Um, because in case my parents, they came from Tibet, so of course they are, they are refugees. But people like us, we, we are born in India. We are as Indian as any Indian can be. The only difference is that I was born into a Tibetan family. And because we are born into a Tibetan family, we, all, we are also born into uh, the Tibetan freedom struggle. So therefore, there, there is a responsibility. So the, the life of a refugee is that you, that you are born into a history, that you are born into a struggle, and you are born uh, with the hope that things will be better tomorrow. But in reality, you are not an Indian, so therefore you cannot live here permanently. Nor are you a Tibetan citizen that you can go to Tibet. In reality, we cannot go to Tibet. We have nothing concretely in touch with Tibet. You know, we, we cannot own anything in Tibet, nor can we go there, even as a tourist. So it's the life between the reality of India and the hope of Tibet tomorrow. So it's a very, very funny ways of living, that you are living totally on hope. Today, all these countries recognize Tibet as a part of China. Now, that is so very clear that you are you are actually lying. You know the lie that China has created. Everybody is agreeing to it because you have international community has trade interest in China. So it's so very clear.